Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. Now I know this is almost a week after the last episode, there have been a few reasons why I've not been able to get these out as quickly. Primarily I was a little bit sick earlier on this week which wasn't good, but I'm much better now, doing much much greater. And also <laughs> my exams are coming up so I've had to start revising. And I do want to say at the beginning of this episode, essentially what I'm going to be doing now. I've got a lot of these episodes actually recorded. Up to episode 34, I believe, or, or thereabouts, or hopefully I should have the footage. I am not going to release them all at once like I did over the past previous weeks, because that way I will just release them all and I won't have any content to release, because I am going to be very busy for the next few weeks. Well, I thought, well, let's edit them all and let's release them, and I'm hoping to get a couple of episodes out a week, maybe on Fridays and Sundays. I know this is going to come out on the Saturday, but that is because my, my editing software was playing up yesterday whilst I was trying to record it so I had to download a new version and oh my god it's so much better although there are a few tweaks that I do not like but I'm sure it's something that I'll get used to anyway at the beginning of this episode I almost said stream because this was filmed on a stream what we are doing is sending down a life support module down to the surface base down to Aldrin base one now the method that I'm going to be using to produce life support for this base is I'm going to be taking the mulch, which is essentially the waste products that the Kerbals produce, and use fertilizer and then recycle that and grow new plants from it, grow new supplies. It's not the most efficient way, but I feel like it's the way that is kind of the best to use at the moment. It doesn't require as much as actually growing crops on the surface, so that's why we have gone for that method, and we will see that happening later on in this episode, me trying to figure out how to actually get that working. Because I haven't put Kerbals over there yet, no. We are going to keep them in the spacecraft, in the Manta that is down there, because we cannot actually produce gypsum, which is what we need to produce fertilizer. This is, there's a, there's a lot of things to produce a lot of things in this series. That's all the part of USI. USI is, it's quite complicated. I think I said it in the last episode, but it's essentially playing Factorio in KSP, which is quite fun. I, I am enjoying myself doing this. I'm not going to go super efficient, but it is nice to get a bit of efficiency. Anyway, what we are working on now is a way of getting that gypsum. We are going to be working on an autonomous miner, although it does have space for a crew in it, because these miners, obviously, they are going to be mining constantly. And Armstrong, its day-night cycle, I think, is about three days long. I might be incorrect, but it's longer than a standard day. So using solar panels in order to keep these miners running at full capacity, well, I would have had to have had a huge amount of battery storage. So what we've done instead is put on a nuclear reactor. However, that will eventually run out of enriched uranium to use. And the only way to transfer enriched uranium around is by having a crew on board. So it is autonomous. It will run everything all on its own, and I've actually delved into the breaking ground parts for this, which is something I've not really ever done. I mostly use Infernal Robotics, but I haven't got that on this save, so I had to do that. But anyway, it is autonomous, but if we want to move the power sources around and actually repower this device once it runs out of enriched uranium, which will take about 29 years, by the way, so it's, it's a, a ways off in the future, we do have that option. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually testing this to make sure that the craft is able to put our, our stuff that we are mining on the surface of road at the moment, we want to make sure that that goes into the planetary warehouse because we want to take stuff from the planetary warehouse and put that in Aldrin Base 1 over at Armstrong. And it would be a real shame if we got this all the way over to Armstrong and then I realized that that didn't work. But it also tests this out in the live stream and it does work. I needed that logistics module on the end in order for that to happen, which is why we, uh, well, another reason why this craft does have the capacity for a crew, but for the vast majority of its time, it won't have a crew. Anyway, we are now testing a method of getting this down to the surface of Armstrong, and in order to do this, I'm just launching it from the runway and we're hyper-editing it into space just to make sure that all of the engines work. And well, what we just saw happen does not happen when we get over to Armstrong. Yes, because that sky crane was placed really poorly by me. Unfortunately, the engines fired through the nuclear reactor, causing that to break away, which would have been very expensive and would have meant that we wouldn't have been unable to get this down to the surface. So what I did instead was put a few drop tanks on the side, used a few Terrier engines, six of these, should be more than capable. It has about 1,200 to 400 meters per second of delta V or thereabouts. 
more than enough to land us on the surface of Armstrong from Collins Station, which is what we are at now. We're building it for real, and we have built it for real in, in the blink of an eye. That was really quick. <laughs> I should go back to my old self and say, like, leave a bit more of this part in the video so you can talk about it a bit more. But anyway, we are able to get that away from Collins Station, and I had the weird issue with extra planetary launch pads again, where the enriched uranium when I was building it in the space plane hangar was all stored within that nuclear reactor on the end, the kind of weird looking grey thing on the, <laughs> on the end of that craft. But when I built it with extra planetary launch pads, that just went out the window and it went into the enriched uranium storage tank that I do have on there. So in order to get over that, I did have to get a Kerbal out of Collins Station board them on this whilst it was around Collins Station, transfer that enriched uranium across, and then start up the reactor. It's a bit of a pain, and for future iterations of this design, I have changed that so that it doesn't have that extra storage, it only has the reactor on the end, and that way I won't have to get a Kerbal out to change that all the time, because the only place that will have enriched uranium on this craft will be the nuclear reactor at the end. Anyway, we were able to successfully land this on the surface of Armstrong. Now what we are doing is, of course, unfolding all of the drills and starting our drilling process. We are going to exploit Armstrong for all of its natural resources, and we're going to be able to turn them into amazing things like material kits and supplies, because obviously it would be nice to keep our Kerbals on the surface of Armstrong fed and watered and oxygenated. Yes, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> they would enjoy that. But this is the first of many that we are going to be sending down, and I think over the course of the next few episodes we'll see the entire lot be sent down, because I didn't want to place them all at one place, because the resources spread over Armstrong. Obviously, we are going to have to land in different biomes to get different things. I did not want the miners at the actual base either, because the base, where I'm at at the moment, it's lagtastic. It's, it's really bad to go to. It's, it's not fun to spend time around there. And if I would have had all of these miners there as well, well, that would have just made my life miserable trying to go to that base. It's pretty miserable as it is, but having more over there would have been even worse. So we are going to spread these miners out. This first one that we sent down has the capability of producing all of the raw resources that we are going to need in order to produce fertilizer for the Kerbals on the base, and it will also be able to produce all of the materials that we need for material kits, which is kind of the start of how we're going to start constructing new stuff actually on the surface of Armstrong using extra planetary launch pads like I have been with Collins Station. Yeah, we're going to mine all of the resources. We're not going to have to rely on road at all anymore. All we're going to do is just leave our Kerbals on the base. They'll get all the resources, turn it into the stuff we need, and then we should be able to build spacecraft or new base modules or whatever we want, really, on the surface of Armstrong. Anyway, we got a crew across and we got rid of all of the extra parts on that surface miner because, you know, I, I thought it would look cooler without those, and <laughs> we brought the Manta, and I didn't talk about the journey over and the journey back. Basically, the journey over, I used the two backwards engines, thinking, yeah, we'll fly it like a plane. Obviously, it's a vacuum moon, so flying it like a plane didn't go very well. When we got over to the base, it took a long time to slow down, so on the return trip, I thought, well, it's probably better to fly it a bit more like a helicopter. That would make a lot more sense, and the journey back to Aldrin Base was much smoother. But here we are once again at the Autonomous Miner. I don't have names for these. They're just going to be like mining platform one, two, and three, and, and so on. Just making sure that on Armstrong, we are pumping our materials into the planetary warehouse, which we are. And that's fantastic, because that means we can come back to this base now and start crewing it. We have gypsum. With the gypsum that we have, we have a machine inside that life support module which will be able to convert gypsum into fertilizer. It's the most efficient way of creating fertilizer with USI. You can also do it with minerals, I believe, but gypsum is much better. And with that, over on the right, we can see that we are producing fertilizer. However, I am now noticing we're not producing any supplies. And I am very confused because we got the agroponics modules all running. We do have the fertilizer in order to make supplies. We also have the mulch, which we can see. 
yet the supplies are going down and it took me a really long time to kind of figure out what was going wrong here. I didn't turn on any of the life support modules on this base, so we weren't recycling anything, and Kerbals without any recyclers use life support incredibly quickly. They will go through like all of the supplies just rapidly. And as soon as I turned on those recycling modules, which we have done just there, there we go! We could see we're getting minus 0, 0.00 per second. We are actually producing supplies, and it is more than enough, actually, to get all six of the Kerbals on that Manta over onto the base. And we can also see, with that, we have turned on all of the production facilities on Aldrin base, and we are now capable of making material kits. Which is great. That is the start of our building on the surface, self-sufficient building. So now we're going to come to Rax Kerman, Peter Kerman, Cullen Kerman, Freck Kerman, Kevin Kerman, and Dylan Kerman, and we are going to be launching these on a new Manta. And we're going to send these over to the base because one thing that I noticed, and I actually read up about this on the USI forums and all of those kind of places, essentially, in order for agroponics to work a lot better than they are, we need a scientist or we need a botanist over there, I believe. And I also noticed that a lot of our machines weren't really running at full capacity, like they were only running at 16% capacity. So I've also got a couple of technicians on here to hopefully try and fix that problem. We unfortunately did not land the booster very successfully there. And so, yeah, we, we've got this botanist and they are going to hopefully mean that we can produce supplies for days and days and days. We're never going to run out of supplies with botanists and scientists on board this space station or not even a space station. It's a, it's a surface base. It's a su look at it. It's on the ground. It is not a space station. It is on the ground. But yeah, no. We brought another six Kerbals over, and actually, with all of these Kerbals over, we are still, with the new scientist and the new biologist, able to feed them all with supplies. And we can see, yeah, we, we're getting quite a lot of supplies. And the technicians that we brought over did help with some of the production of material kits as well. However, the large material converters, for some reason, I'm only getting 16% on those. And I don't know what's causing that. We're going to have to figure out another way, but that will come in a future episode. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later. <laughs>